Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. It's been a while but it's so lovely to be here today. How are you? I hope you're well. I have a lovely tutorial to share with you today but before we do that I would just like to say that this video has been really kindly sponsored by a lovely British company called Serious Readers. I'm going to tell you all about them and the wonderful lights that they make and then we'll get into the tutorial. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoy this video. So Serious Readers are a UK company who make wonderful lights for reading and for hobbies. They very kindly sent me their high definition floor standing lamp and also a compact lamp for me to try out and to see how it worked with my sewing. Now we get a lot of grey days here in the UK so I've always used some sort of lamp when I'm sewing, even in the daytime. I've always found that that is completely essential for being able to see my stitches clearly. I was really interested to try this light out because it uses something called daylight wavelength technology and what that does is replicate natural light as close as possible. And I must say, it is completely different to any other daylight lamp that I've used before. The light that it gives off really does feel natural. It feels like you're working on a nice bright day and it's really relaxing on the eyes and I love that it has a dimmer switch as well because you can adjust the brightness to suit the conditions that you're working in. The lovely natural feeling light that it gives off means that when you're matching colours, for example thread and fabric, you can do it really easily because the colours show up as close as they would in natural light. So I really love using this light and I just can't imagine sewing without it. If you're interested in the light and you'd like to find out a bit more, I'll leave a link in the description box which will take you to the Serious Readers website and you can read a little bit more about it. And if you did want to purchase one, you can use the code EMMA10 and that will give you a free compact light which is a lovely little extra light to have and also means you can set up two little sewing areas in your home in two different places. Well that's what I'm doing with mine anyway. So a huge thank you to Serious Readers for being so kind to send me the lights and to sponsor this video which really helps me to keep going with making content here on YouTube. Now it's time for the tutorial. So today's tutorial is all about making a lovely little flex frame purse. Here's one I made from Liberty Fabric but today's tutorial is going to show you how you can make one out of a plain fabric and add some EPP and embroidery embellishment. Flex frames are really easy to use so if you're a beginner this is a great project for you. I'm sure you can get flex frames on Etsy and eBay but I bought mine on Amazon and I'll leave a link below. I'm using a 9cm flex frame and I've made a pattern, a free pattern that you can download and that will fit the 9cm frame but if you're using anything bigger or smaller you'll need to just adjust the size of the pattern. The purse is only small so this is a great project for using up any scrap fabrics that you have or just small pieces. I've chosen some solid colours and I'm also going to add little hints of Liberty too. Now I really recommend that you use a medium or lightweight iron-on interfacing because the way I've designed the pattern is that the interfacing that we'll iron on to our exterior fabric will give us the sewing line because this purse is sewn all by hand. You can do it by machine if you want to but I'm going to show you how to do it by hand and we use the interfacing as a guide. So print out your pattern pieces, there's a piece for the interfacing you need to cut two from the interfacing, there's another pattern piece for the exterior fabric and you need to cut two from that and then there's also a, another pattern piece, it's a slightly different size for the lining fabric, you need two of those as well. Now this is optional but I decided to cut two pieces of wadding, just a thin wadding and I used the interfacing pattern piece to cut those and that will just give the purse a bit of extra body. I'm ironing my medium weight 
iron-on interfacing onto my exterior fabric now, onto the wrong side of the exterior fabric. I'm just positioning it so it's in the middle and it's got an equal seam allowance all around the edge of about a quarter of an inch. Now this is important because we're going to sew later on along the edge of the interfacing. So this gives us a guide, a sewing guide. So just lightly press and make sure all the edges are stuck down and if they're not you can just give it another press and you need this on the wrong side of both of your exterior pieces. Now for the optional wadding I'm just tacking it in place with sew line glue pen you could tack it in place with removable stitches if you wish and we're going to quilt that later. Now is the fun part of adding a bit of embellishment and I'm just going to make a little EPP flower with a central hexagon and then I'm going to use the hex petal shapes for to make the flower. Now I'm using hexiform rather than paper and I get a lot of questions about this. I'm glue basting it in place and the hexiform stays in place and it isn't removed like you would for paper. So if you're making your flower out of paper, remember you'll need to remove the papers. But hexiform is really great because, especially with these curved shapes, you can glue it in place and then you don't have to worry about removing it. So it really helps to keep the curve really nicely. I'm using a seam allowance of about an eighth of an inch here and I fussy cut parts of my fabric, but there will be nothing left to waste, don't worry. I'm just glue basting my curve and gently teasing the fabric around the edge to get a nice smooth curve. your six petals then you need to just whip stitch them together to your central hexagon. So place your top petal with the right sides together with your hexagon lining up the straight edge of your petal and just whip stitch together and the way we're going to sew this is just like you would sew any hexagon flower. It's really simple. Just using a whip stitch making tiny stitches to join them together. Now I don't break my thread here, I just take the next piece and I join it on. I will stitch up that seam joining the two petals together and then I'll carry my thread back down and stitch the petal along the straight edge to the hexagon. And just carry on in this way until you've completed your flower. Next, choose which piece of your purse is going to be the front and find the centre of it and then position your flower where you want it to be. I'm just using some sew line glue to tack it in place but of course you can pin it. You can put anything on the front of your purse, it doesn't have to be a flower like this. You can embellish it in any way you like. And I'm just doing a really simple applique stitch to attach the flower to the purse all around the edge. So now it's time for some embroidery and I just thought it would be fun to embroider some little butterflies next to the flower. So I'm just doing some really simplistic butterflies using Daisy Daisy stitch for the butterfly wings and I'm just going to do some straight stitches for the body and French knots just to add a little bit of decoration to the wings. Really simple to do. If you've never tried embroidery before this would be a really great little detail to add. Daisy Daisy stitch is really fun. It's a great way to make flowers but I just thought it would be fun to use it to make the butterfly wings.
So now it's time to start to construct the purse. Now I've cut two pieces of cotton in a contrasting colour. They are five inches by two inches. And I'm just going to turn the hem on the shorter sides. Turn it over by a quarter of an inch and then over again by a quarter of an inch. I'm just pinning it in place before I sew it. Now you can press this with an iron if you need to, I'm just finger pressing it. I also have a little seam roller that I like using for this sort of thing. When you've done that, just check that it is the same width as the interfacing because the interfacing is the finished size of the purse. And then do the same on the other one and just check that they are both the same. Now you can sew this by machine but I'm doing it by hand so I just used my little seam roller that I mentioned and then I'm just doing a really simple running stitch with cotton thread and just an ordinary needle. So you need to do this on all four sides and then fold it in half across the middle and the seam roller is really useful for that but you can press it with an iron. Now you need to line up the raw edges of your piece with the top raw edge of your purse and just centre it so that the edges line up with the edges of the interfacing because as I said that is going to be the finished size of your purse. The extra fabric is the seam allowance and I'm just doing a simple back stitch right along the top edge of the interfacing. I'm using that as a guide. I'm not actually stitching on the interfacing, I'm stitching right above it as close as I can. That gives me a nice straight line and will give me a really lovely seam. If you didn't use interfacing you would just need to mark your seam allowance with a fabric pen. So when you've done that you can give it a press to open it out and the next step is just to secure that wadding in place. So I'm just doing a really simple running stitch with embroidery thread and I'm just doing it on the right on the edge because I want the stitches to show when the purse has been constructed but I want them to hold that wadding in place just so it doesn't slip. Repeat that on the back and then you're ready to place them right sides together and just pin it to hold it and then we're going to stitch all around the edge. So we're just going to start from that corner and do a really simple back stitch to secure both pieces in place. It's really relaxing doing this by hand, that's why I prefer to do it than use the machine but of course that's entirely up to you. When it's complete you'll need to repeat this process with the lining pieces but what I'm going to do first is just turn over the top edge of both of the lining pieces by a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to do the same back stitch right around the edge of the piece but I'm going to do it an eighth of an inch away from the edge this time. When you've done that, 
turn it right side out and then we're going to place the exterior part of the purse inside the lining with the wrong sides together. Line up the folded edge of the lining with your stitches because that folded edge is going to cover the stitches that you did before. Line up the side seams and then just do a simple catch stitch. Don't stitch right the way through to the front of the purse. I'm just catching one layer of that folded fabric at the top as I secure the lining in place. Do this all the way around and then it's time to turn it right side out. And this can be a little bit fiddly, just be gentle with it and take your time. And there we have the purse and it's ready for its flex frame. Now this is actually surprisingly easy because you've created this channel at the top of your purse and all you need to do is open up the flex frame and slide it one part into each of the channels. Now it can be a little bit sharp, sometimes they are metal so just take it easy but as you do this, take your time, you'll just need to jiggle it about a little bit and then push it right through, push the fabric back and you need to close the frame by letting the two parts slot together and then you're given a little pin and you can drop that into the hole to, and then you bend over the little piece of metal at the top to secure it in place. It's a little bit fiddly, you'll definitely need some pliers. I misplaced my pliers unfortunately so I'm just using some tweezers which I don't recommend. Just use a pair of pliers to bend it over and there we have it in place. The final thing that I like to do is a ladder stitch just to close the gap so that the flex frame isn't going to be seen on the outside. So just a simple ladder stitch from side to side to close that gap. So here's the completed purse and it's a really nice little project to do. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you're going to give it a go as well. The flex frames are quite inexpensive so this makes it a really fun project for using up any scrap fabrics or just beautiful fabrics like this Liberty one here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video, I really hope that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.